Hi guys, this is the Poundland friction powered uh, toy car that I've already shown you I've started work on to convert it to radio controlled. So that's the original chassis with the friction motor on it. And this is my first draft just to get the wheels and the fixings in the right place. Now in the meantime uh, somebody sent me a link uh, I'm not sure if it's on Twitter or no, it must be Instagram on a different subject but if we look at it on the screen here oh, sorry, wait it out the Gamma 1.8, an improved print-in-place RC chassis by under-engineered under with a link to Thingiverse so you can download all the files. And I must say, it looks brilliant. It's not what I had in mind, but having looked at it, I downloaded the files. Um, I will show you in a minute what I did to actually convert it sorry about my squeaky chair to convert it to the right size to go on my Poundland car now I still need to make a few changes to it um, the most obvious changes I've made to it at the moment is I've added these pillars at the front and back so that it does actually fit straight on. So there we go. Um, I haven't done anything yet with this to release it because being a print in place everything's all printed in one go and there'll be little bits of filament holding it together that you need to break so that the steering works and the gearbox and, all, and the back axle will actually spin. He does suggest you put a 4mm metal bar through the axle because at the moment it's a filament tube which won't survive for very long. A few issues with what I did um, and a few bits haven't come out perfectly for what I want. I'll do it with one hand. There we go. But on the face of it, it fits. Um, stick a motor in there with a gear on it, it'll link up with that gear. Uh, there's plenty of space there for the RC gear. I need to manipulate this a little bit and it'll all start moving if I'm lucky. Because I've printed it with PLA, which is probably the most brittle option possible, it will probably all fail. But, before we worry about it failing, there's a few things I didn't think about when I printed it. I didn't check what size tyres go on these wheels. I mean, he mentions it in his write-up, but I didn't even think about measuring them. But that gap there is only... Where are we? Twenty-eight millimetres. And the wheels that this is expecting to run on are well, 29 and a half, probably 30. So they're going to be a little bit smaller. And on this scale, being a little bit smaller does make quite, quite a difference. So what I might do, I assume I'm going to have to reprint this anyway, is I might actually open this out a little bit at the back here. So there's space for a bigger tyre, bigger wheel, bigger tyre. Uh, he based this on the uh, Tamiya, what does he say his instructions? Something like the 2588 or something, I, I can't remember. You'll have to, there'll be links in the video description. But on the face of it, this is a quick and easy 
modification. I'll show you the video I've done, the screen capture of me modifying his body shell or chassis. Basically, I cut it in half and stretched it all on tink uh, Tinkercad. So this is a, I still intend to do what I plan to do to begin with. So this is a bit of a side track. And if it works, that'll be handy. I'll just show you that I have worked on it and it is all running freely now. So the back axle came quite nicely, came free quite nicely. The front steering I've had to be very gentle with and work on. But it's certainly moving, it's loosening up the more I do it. That's the thing with these print-in-place um, designs. They, I, I just can't believe how clever they are. They're designed to have just the tiniest little bit of connection between them so they can print. And then you have to break that connection by manoeuvring it. And it all comes free. Same with the wheels. Because I don't have any tyres to go on it, any suitable ones, what I think I'll do is I'll print some out of PLA so they'll be um, hard. They won't be grippy at all, but at least I should be able to put them on there so we can see what it should look like. I must say I really had doubts as to whether I'll be able to get that apart. But it's all there. I'm fascinated by it.
Thanks for watching. If you want more information, check down below in the video description. If you like this video, you might like this one up here. And if you want to subscribe, you can check out my channel over here. Up here is my latest video on my channel. And down here is a video playlist associated with the video you've just watched. Thanks again for watching.